Aloha, this is Brian Watkins, and this is my first pivot table uh, video for the product sales data uh, pivot tables. You have two ways of finding out which, which pivot tables you have to learn. Uh, in the introductory um, spreadsheet I give you, I list them all here in product sales data. You can see them there. Uh, and for purposes of this video, I'm going to put them on a piece of paper here. So we're doing the first one, which is total sales for each category. Okay, we're going to create a pivot table that summarizes the total sales by the product category. Now, just because this is the first video, let me familiarize you with what we're doing. We're in a workbook that is Accounting 231 Pivot Table Data. This is the same workbook you'll open in the testing center when you have your test. The workbook has four sheets in it and sheets are denoted by the tabs at the bottom. Each tab refers to a separate set of data. You can do pivot tables from any data, but they have to be arranged in columns with the name at the top, and these are called fields, and we're going to manipulate these fields to produce our pivot table. So the way we start is we select one cell somewhere in this data, and it can be, the, it, it, it can be A1 there, but let's just do one in the middle. You hit the Insert tab, and then the Pivot table on the left, and the Create screen comes up. You just take it as it is. You don't need to make any changes to the Create screen for purposes of our 231 class. So I hit OK, and it created a new worksheet. You can see down here it's called Sheet 1. Now to build a report, we're going to choose the fields, which we can no longer see, but which are found over here in the Pivot Table Field dialog. So there's the fields that we have, and we can put them in these boxes. Okay, now let's take a look at what we're going to do. We're going to summarize total sales by the product category. Now, before you do a pivot table, you have to know a little something about your data. So if we go to product sales data real quick, we note that here are the sales numbers for each product. But what we're being asked to do is say, how much did we have in sales? of beverages. And you'll notice that each category here on the far left has four instances of product next to it. Okay, so each product appears four times. That shows you there's four quarters worth of information. Okay, so that's all the information that you're given. And the magic of pivot tables is that it deals with so many... Oh, I moved the video, sorry deals with so many pieces of data at once. If I go down here to the bottom, see you're looking at 287 lines. Okay, so if we go back to sheet one, we see our pivot table, uh, our interface here, I, I guess the best word for it. If I click outside of the report, that disappears and all of your, all of your controls disappear. So don't panic when that happens, just Click back inside the report and they reappear. All right, to create a report using pivot tables that summarizes total sales by product category, that is a, a pivot table that has label fields, which are the categories, they're just labels, and it has value fields, which are the sales. Okay, and that's a completed pivot table. It took all the beverages, totaled up the sales in those categories, and did the same for each separate category. So put in your mind you have the labels and the values. All right, now when you do the test, there are certain things that you'll need to do for the test. The first and probably the most important is in order to keep track of your work, you need to know how to rename a sheet. So I click on sheet one there, right click, here's the menu, rename, and I'm going to call this. Um, for purposes of, of this video here, it would be answer one. Okay, and I can do other things. I can give that a tab color, uh, make it bright red. Okay, I can drag it by clicking it and moving it around. So I could put, for example, my answers out here. All right, that's one thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is to put a style on your pivot table and format your numbers. Okay, the formatting rules are not as strict as they are on my other Excel exams, but you do have to have 
thousand commas. That's the one requirement. There are three different uh, versions of that number format. So I've right clicked, go to number format. Okay, and you can use number if you check the box there. That comes up like this, or number format. I could use accounting. It's also okay, or number format. I can use currency. All three are okay. I don't care which one you use so long as I see those thousand commas in there. All right, the second thing you need to do is go to the Design tab. And remember, the Pivot Tables Tool tab disappears if you click outside the Pivot Table. But if you click back inside the Pivot Table, you can go to the Design tab and pick a style. Any style, I don't care which one. You've just got to turn it in with a style. So here is a completed Pivot Table that would receive 100% credit on the test. That's all you need to do.